And welcome to another edition of the Hank Unplugged podcast. I love doing these podcasts, by the way, and I hope that you appreciate this podcast. We bring such a diverse number of people together through the podcast. The last one I did was with a man named Tristan Osbey. He's the only government official in the world that has the moniker Persecuted Christians in his title. And he's the state secretary for Hungary and has raised some $50 million to help persecuted Christians. Four out of every five are persecuted Christians. And we live in a time in which unity of Christians is so transcendently important. I've often said that it is true to say that if we don't hang together, we're going to hang separately. So there's a great need within the body of Christ for unity. And that is the subject of today's podcast. The podcast is based on a book that is titled Until Unity. It's a book written by my friend Francis Chan. Francis has been a pastor for over 30 years. He's a best-selling author. He's written some incredible books, including a book titled Crazy Love, as well as a book titled Letters to the Church. And then with his dear wife, Lisa, he has co-authored a book that is titled You and Me Forever. So we are divided, and that is a reproach upon the name of Christ, but many religious groups are systemically divided as well. But I think, getting back to your main point, I mean, you think about the schisms that took place, and you're familiar with those schisms. I mean, the great schism that took place between the East and the West was really a sin of fratricide. In other words, instead of working in collegial, conciliar fashion, the churches began to divide the East from the West, and eventually in 1054, the Western Church sends a bull of excommunication to the Eastern Church over the Filioque, over changing what was decided in Nicaea in 325 and then Constantinople right after that. And they messed with the faith, and very, very interesting, they were the ones to excommunicate the East. And so now you have this big fissure that leaves a blackened lava trail between East and West. And then 500 years later, you have a big schism that takes place in the Western Church between Rome and the Reformers, and then the Church continues to fissure after that one fissuring after the other. And some of this has to do with the essentials of the historic Christian faith. And I suppose the operative question in terms of unity is, what are the essentials that we can ultimately unify around? I mean, if we talk about getting rid of all barriers, I mean, we have to start by talking about what are the essentials of the historic Christian faith. And there's a lot of debate about that. Yeah. So, you know, Zwingli comes along after Luther and says, look, I don't think baptism is a sacrament. In essence, he's saying baptism is something that God does, not for us, but something we're doing for God. Zwingli believes in infant baptism. The Anabaptists come along and say, that's anathema. And then you have fissuring that takes place with respect to essentials of the Christian faith. I mean, Luther believed in the real presence of Christ, but Zwingli did not. Is that an essential, or is that a secondary issue? I mean, those are the issues that ultimately have to be grappled with. Yeah, it's, it's so hard when we... Uh, well, first, I, I just want to say, gosh, to anyone that's listening... When you hear about that schism, I mean, isn't there something inside of you, I would argue, a person of the Holy Spirit, that just your heart breaks because of the division? Like, you want this oneness. I mean, when I hear about all these different divisions, I mean, I have to go back to 
my desire based upon the spirit that God has placed in me of, I want oneness with the body of Christ. And before we even get into like, okay, so do we divide on this? Do we divide on that? It starts off with in your inner person, when you read these passages about the heart of God, the heart of Christ, Lord, I I want them to become perfectly one. Like this is God's desire do you listen to my voice, listen to Hank's voice, and go, oh, I just want to be perfectly one with them, regardless of what denomination they're a part of, because it sounds like these men really trust in the blood of Christ for their salvation, and they really do believe in the Holy Spirit and His indwelling in man to make us more like Christ. And I want to be on this journey. I want to be in this family with them. I want to be in this body with them. And you take the Word of God literally that we literally are the body of Christ somehow. And He is the head. And He doesn't want His body divided. And once that desire is in there, and once your desire is, wow, Francis Chan seems like, He knows Jesus, and He is a part of the body. I want to love Him deeply. I want to love Him like I love myself. I want to love Him the way that Christ loved me. And I I really believe that that ought to be step one. It has to do with the Spirit's indwelling and this desire for oneness and this desire to love one another as Christ loved us, and it's with that foundation of love and desire for oneness that we then speak and start talking about some of these issues and going, okay, God, here we are. We love you. We want to be one. We want you to be the head, and we want to leave here united more one than ever as we discuss what are the most important things? What are the critical things? But I think sometimes we get into these discussions without a foundation of love, a desire for oneness as Christ wanted it. And I do think that's important. It doesn't sound real scholarly. It may sound, you know, sophomoric or, you know, just, <laughs> you know, that's cute. Okay, yeah, I love each other, but let's get to the facts. But I'm going, I, I really believe that as we come in love, unified, that that's when God is going to reveal truth to us. Because as we learn from Corinthians, as you were quoting, the pursuit of truth isn't all about intellectual discussion. In fact, it is a gift, and it's something that is of the Spirit, that the spiritual man will receive. Now, it involves study, because the Bible calls us to that. But there's something much deeper that goes on, and there's a, there's a transferring of truth from God himself that is not merely, you know, uh, a fact going into my ears and uh, then translating through my brain, and now I come to know truth. There's something that God does, and that's why we need to be so obedient in our love for one another and the obedience to his commands that when we come together to hopefully figure out what really is essential. 